Today's video is definitely speculation, okay? This is not news, and I don't have any inside sources. I'm not talking to anybody you guys don't already have access to. But I am basically going to throw out a bunch of puzzle pieces and trying my best to connect them, and you can decide for yourselves at the end of the video if you think this sounds reasonable or believable at all. But I have reason to believe that Aptera Motors could be one of the first vehicles to actually tap into the Tesla supercharging network and I honestly think this could be a perfect fit for both Tesla and Aptera. So for one, Elon Musk recently tweeted in response to MKBHD on Twitter suggesting that, you know, why hasn't anybody else taken up Tesla's offer for access to the supercharging network, right? There's more supercharging stations than any other type of EV charger network in the United States. And Marquez was theorizing, is it the price? Is it the pride? Are people skeptical about Tesla? Or is there some hidden fees we don't know too much about? And Elon says, that they are actually going to be opening up access to the supercharging network, though it's kind of low-key right now. We don't know who it is. He has not announced what company is going to be adopting Tesla's standard, or if this is going to be exclusive to Europe, or that kind of thing, because over in Europe, they use the CCS charge plug for superchargers and regular non-Tesla EV charge stations. That would just be a software thing if they wanted to enable it over in Europe. But in America, if you wanted to have access to supercharger networks, you would have to adopt Tesla's proprietary connector, which currently no one else is. But recently, when Aptera dropped their video showcasing their latest prototype, we did see this one still frame of a Tesla charge connector with Aptera branding, which at first I didn't think that was enough evidence, right? I was just like, okay, well, it's a prototype. You know, they're experimenting. This is not the official production model, so don't get your hopes up. Don't get too excited. But then what I noticed in their Q&A breakdown, which I'm very grateful they have, they decided to answer as many questions as they could after they did a one-hour Zoom call in this huge and very in-depth spreadsheet that they tweeted out so you can go there and find answers to most of the questions people had for the company. And under the question of what charge connector do you plan on adopting for Aptera, they didn't want to give a super clear answer, but all they did want to say was that Aptera would be supported by all of the basic run-of-the-mill, you know, third-party EV charge locations, like it would support CCS chargers, it would support J1772, you know, all your typical DC fast charging locations. And then they went on to say, we believe Tesla has some of the best electric vehicle technology in the industry and we hope to partner with them someday. So now seeing this answer, it's making me think that Aptera might not have all the finalized details and it might not be ready yet or finally decided between the two companies. But my guess is showing the proprietary connector in their video, given what they're answering on the Q&A about how they think Tesla has the best EV charging tech, and the fact that at the same time, Elon Musk is suggesting that, well, it's kind of low-key right now, but we are opening up the supercharging network to other companies, makes me think there's some kind of deal maybe they're trying to work out right now. And some of you are probably wondering, like, well, why Aptera? You know, Tesla could open up the supercharging network to anybody with the right paperwork and fees, so why would they want to give it to this three-wheeled EV startup company from San Diego? Well, partially because they are a smaller EV startup and Aptera is really not selling that many vehicles that go head-to-head -head with any of the vehicles Tesla is selling. So it's a two-door three-wheeled vehicle. Yes, it is by the DMV technically a motorcycle, but you don't have to wear a helmet to drive it and you drive it like a normal car. It only sits two people and because it's so small and designed so weird, Tesla is probably thinking, well, there's not going to be a huge number of these things on the road because it is a smaller company going for a small niche of the automotive market. You know, two-seaters in three-wheeled vehicles are not super popular in the United States, but I actually think that's a good thing because a huge concern I've seen a lot of Tesla owners bring up whenever we start talking about opening up the supercharger network to other companies is, well, I don't want Tesla opening up the supercharger network because then it's going to flood all of our superchargers with non-Teslas that are charging and then we have to put up with either, I don't know, VW ID4s showing up or Ford Mach-E's filling up all our charge stations and I don't want to have to wait in line. So I think it's a reasonable concern that, you know, Tesla doesn't want to open up the supercharger network to a huge demographic of competitors because then their charge stations are going to get filled up and their customers will be annoyed. But thankfully, Aptera has been pretty upfront with how many orders they're getting and how many vehicles they plan on producing over the next few years. So I always found this interesting because Aptera is not a publicly traded company and yet they're disclosing how many orders they're getting and there's other publicly traded EV companies that are not disclosing how many reservations they're getting. 
think. It's just funny how honesty works sometimes. But Aptera has said that they recently surpassed 4,000 vehicle pre-orders, which, you know, compared to Tesla, is pretty tiny, pretty small. But for Aptera's young beginnings, this is a decent start. And, you know, 4,000 vehicle pre-orders and the fact that they're not anticipating to be able to do more than a couple of thousand deliveries by the end of next year and shooting for around 10,000 vehicles delivered in 2022, that means Aptera is not going to be flooding or filling up supercharging stations, okay? Because the vehicles, at least initially, are going to be built in such small capacities. And the other requirement that is not for certain, but it's a theory I have that Tesla might have for other vehicles having access to the supercharging network is the interior display. So we know other EV startups have tried to contact Tesla in the past, like Bollinger or Bollinger, how do you ever pronounce them? They claim to have reached out to Tesla asking for supercharging access, but didn't hear back. And I have a theory that it could have something to do with the fact that they have a very basic minimal interior with no center display to showcase any information on. And again, I don't know the ins and outs of the contract to access the supercharging network, but imagine if one of the requirements is that you have some type of larger inside display that can show and demonstrate the charging speed and kind of the same animation Tesla shows when they have vehicles charging at their supercharger network, showing the battery status increasing and all that. Well, Aptera has a 15 inch centered display on the interior of their vehicles, very similar to that of the Model 3. So if there's some type of software requirement for supercharging access, I think Aptera would check that box. The other great news is that Aptera's would probably not have to spend too much time at supercharging stations because they are extremely energy efficient. This vehicle has one of the lowest drag coefficients of any vehicle and because of that they're able to achieve really really great range with very small battery packs. So when Aptera has these smaller sized batteries with the exception of maybe the 1000 mile variant which has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack that one's pretty big but every Aptera is going to have solar cells on it. Some you can spec out to have more solar cells than others but that will also help them charge up just a little bit faster and because the base model Aptera is just having a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack and the mid-tier options have a 40 kilowatt hour and 60 kilowatt hour battery pack that basically means any Aptera on the road is going to have a battery pack pretty similar in size to just a standard range Model 3. In other words you won't have to stop at a Tesla supercharger with your Aptera for very long to actually top it off and get a huge amount of range back which means it won't be a huge bottleneck for Tesla and because there's not going to be that many of them on the road compared to vehicles like the Model 3 or Y they're not going to be flooding superchargers and making it annoying for Tesla owners and Aptera is you know a brand new startup they don't have any pre-existing vehicles right now and they're not owned by anyone so they have no predetermined tradition like maybe a VW or a Ford does with previous generation electric vehicles that have utilized other connectors so if Aptera is being honest here and they're like yeah you'll be able to charge from any location they could just be referring to an adapter and if they do end up getting the Tesla proprietary connector that would technically mean they could charge at superchargers of course they would cost money I doubt you'd be able to get free supercharging miles from the network but through adapters you'd also be able to charge from other charge points like Electrify America if you wanted to which in my opinion would make the already very compelling Aptera even more interesting but even if it doesn't end up being Aptera I promise you I will be covering whoever ends up getting access to the Tesla supercharging network first particularly in North America but I'd also be curious to see how Tesla handles it in Europe if they decide to open it up to others and also thank you to everybody who used my Aptera referral code for those curious yes the referral link is working now which means that if any of you decide to reserve an Aptera you can save $30 on the reservation when you use my code let me know if you guys think this is too much wishful thinking does Aptera being the first company to utilize the supercharging network make sense to you or do you think Tesla is referring to some other brand when he's saying that they're kind of low-key opening the supercharging network now and when do you think we'll get some answers. Feel free to let me know. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.